The next step is to try to <coughs> well, try to get more more bad fibers. Here we had just delta. This was delta equals delta is most one, and we want to do something with more bad fibers. So we start by uh, something which is rather recent, which is the formal lemma for torsors. So we have the formal lemma for the Brouwer group. And now I want to look at the th th uh, formal lemma for torsos under tori. So let me remind you a few things. So if you have a field K, uh, a torus T or a field K is an algebraic K group. Um, torus of a K such that T cross K K bar is isomorphic to GM K bar to the end for some n. So it's over the algebraic closure, it's just a metric, uh, product of copies of a metric group, but we, it's, got it, it's twisted. It is a Gato action and the whole situation. Okay. So, and then given a torus, you have a character group T hat, which is by definition the morphisms as K bar algebraic groups of T bar with values T bar with values in GM K bar. And this is isomorphic to z to the n plus some Galois action. And you can go back and forth. The, tor the character group give, re reconstructs the torus. Okay. So the t, t, t goes to t. And it's anti duality. There's an anti duality. t, t hat. If I have t1 goes to t2, I have t2 hat going to t1 hat. Um, example, if you take a um, capital curve K, a finite extension, finite extension of fields, separable, then you can define the torus R capital curve K GM by its group of values on, on K algebras. This is just A tensor little k, capital K star. And you can define the group R1, capital K over KGM, as the kernel. So you take of A. This is the set of elements alpha in A tensor little k, k star, such that the norm from k to k of alpha is equal to 1. So there's an exact sequence of tori. 1 goes to R1 capital K of a KGM, goes to R capital K of a KGM, goes by the norm to GMK. So that's an example of a torus. And this uh, torus has a particularly nice cohomology. So H1 of K with values in GM is 0. This is Hilbert 90. H1 of little k with values in R, R capital K of a KGM is also zero. This is this plus Shapiro. And then from this sequence here, you get that uh, k star divided by norm capital K of little k of k star is isomorphic to H1 of k with values in R1 capital K of a KGM. Okay, so this group here. Uh, uh, as soon as I would say, if there is something which is a group and you don't know why it's a group, then it must be a cohomology group. So that, <laughs> that's, that's one. Okay. 
So, so now we're interested in fact in, in, in torsors, so torsors. So the group H1 et al, so X now is a K variety. K variety. T over K is a torus. The, group, the Abelian group H1 et al, X which is in T, classifies principal homogeneous spaces y over x under t. That is an action, there's an action t, uh, t cross k y to y cross k cross x, x, sorry, y, which is an isomorphism. t y goes to t y comma y. So there's an action of t on y, well, a group action, and then you want this isomorphism which is saying that T acts faithfully, transitively in the fibers over the Arabic world. Okay. So these are also called torsos. This is shorter. Okay. And now, um, example. If X is affine, if I have X over K, I have a function F in, uh, in, uh, which is invertible on X. Why not? F, F need not be projective. Uh, X need to be projective, and I have a field extension which is separable. Then I can look at the equation given by X and the equation F equals norm capital K over K of some variable psi, and that is a t that's a torsor under uh, under R one capital K over K G M. I'm not saying that all torsors are like this, but that's an example of a torsor under R1GM. Just add as many variables as the degree of capital K over K, and I look at the equation on X, F is invertible, so I can look at the equation F equals the norm of something that gives me a variety of dimension, dimension of X plus degree of K, capital K over K, minus one. Okay, an example. Okay, now, there's a cup product So there's a pairing between T and T hat, since T hat is a character group. So over the algebraic closure, there's a map here like GM. In fact, it's, you know, it's a map like this, as algebraic groups. Now it's a bit shocking because T is a, ni a nice algebraic group, whereas T hat is some ZN, but why not? It's a group locally of, uh, it's not a finite type, but it's locally of finite type of respect K, so we're allowed to do this. So do we have the natural pairing? And then this induces a pairing H1 et al. XT cross H1 et al. XT hat to what? Well, to H2 et al. XGM, which is just the bar group of X. Okay. So here we have the torsos, and here we have this group here. Actually, this group will only be interested here in the image of what happens over the ground field. H1 et al. of the ground field K with reason T hat. So this is H1 of Galois with values in a finite type, torsion-free module, so that's a finite group. Okay, so now, now let me write down the, the formal lemma for torsos. So theorem, let x over k smooth uh, integral. Maybe I want to take uh, okay, project smooth and projective. How many variants? Let's look this one. Integral. So it's nice. It's, it's a good variety. And then x contains an open set u. There is k open. And then I take uh, a torsor, let y goes to x be a torsor, sorry, over u, over u, 
under a KTRS T, which is given to us. Okay. Okay. Now let B B uh, the um, so this is a torsor in the U. So there's a class theta. So it corresponds to a class theta in H1 et al of U with values in T. Class of Y over X. I told you that this group is isomorphic to principal homogeneous spaces over X. So we had a torsor of a U. So it has a class in of a U, sorry. In H1 et al U T. Now I look at um, at B, which is a set of elements for the shape theta cup chi. Theta is this class, and chi runs through the elements in H1 of K with values in T hat. And that is a subgroup of what? Of Brauber view. And I'll find it. Because uh, th this one is finite and there's just one theta. And it's a finite subgroup. Because I mean that's a group. Okay, now let MV be an analytic point of U, which is orthogonal to uh, B intersection bar group of X. So we take another a point which is analytic on U. That is, uh, U is open, okay? So I, almost, um, I look at the model of the ring of integers and almost for almost all V, I take an integral point. And then, okay, I have a family of adels and I can pair it with B intersection bar of X. Okay. So uh, I suppose it's also going to this for, for, the, for this bar manning pairing. Okay, then there exists uh, alpha in H1KT. So this is Galois commodity with us in the torus, such that the twisted torus, I'll say a word about what this is, twisted torus, uh, y minus alpha, well, let's say y alpha goes to x, has a point uh, PV, so PV belongs to Y alpha. Y alpha is, again is open because it's a, sorry, it's over U. Again, this, is a, this was a torus over U, we have a, get a torus over U. Uh, so we have an analytic point uh, PV in Y alpha of AK, uh, such that PV is mapped to uh, MV. For all V in S, sorry, so I'm sorry, I forgot something. Uh, S is fixed. S, of, S is a finite set in omega. All right. So that's that's the theorem. That's the theorem. And so the theorem uh, appears as a kind of uh, small proposition, but it's uh, somehow we missed. This is something we missed, and we didn't realize it is useful. But the proof is quite easy. You will see. I give the proof starting from the from the, the one for the Brown group. So this is in a paper of um, Browning, Mathison, Skorbogatov. So it's a very general statement, and you will see how convenient it is in practice. You see, so the theorem asserts something about, um, we start with something which is orthogonal to the Brown group, and we produce some element alpha in H1KT. Okay, with this property here. So this, okay, so, so, what is the proof? Well, we use some uh, sequence, which is, uh, I, I forgot which, uh, this Poitou Tate, if I put all the names, I'm sure, I'm sure to be, okay, Poitou Tate Nakayama, which is an exact sequence in class field theory. Uh, for G of tori, which and I look at it, so there's a very long, there's a nine terms exact sequence. I just used to write down the part which is useful here. You have H1KT goes to dark sum for all V and omega 
of the H1 kVt goes to the dual arm H1 k T hat Q mod Z. So the exact sequence that uh, tells you uh, what happens for these things. Okay. So in the case when T, so if T is R1, capital, so that you feel comfortable. Suppose T is R1 capital K of KGM and capital K of K is cyclic of the, the group Z mod N. Then the sequence, example, so this example. The sequence is simply K star modulo norm K star goes to direct sum, well, direct sum, I mean, I put the this is it, direct sum, sorry. A direct sum of the KV star divided by norm KV star goes to Zen mod N, which is a sequence in class V theory which we saw many times, right? But uh, so that was the case T because I want, but you have a version for an arbitrator S. Okay. So I, I explained just now that for this situation, well, this is a morphism here, okay? So this is just a parenthesis here. So the, the, the map here, you can might wonder what is the map, where well, the map, the point is that you have a map, a pairing between H1 KVT and H1 KV of the character, of the character group T hat, and that lands in, in bar group of KV. Which is, Q mod Z, which is a subgroup of Q mod Z. Okay, that's how you get this pairing here. So this is exact. Yeah. Cyclic of degree greater than. Well, the, the group Z mod N. I put Z mod N. Degree N. Field extension cyclic of degree N. Then we get an exact. T is R1, cap, R1 capital K. R1. R1. R1, 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 it, it, it translates like this. Okay. You get this formula here, you get it locally, and then you get this thing. I mean, you can compute very easily that the H1K T hat in that case is just a modern. So this is exact exact sequence. Okay, so right. another example. Another example is that if you take R1 capital K of a KGM and G is Galois capital K of a K, so uh, Galois. And G has no, well, G is equal to its derived group. Then, suppose G has no characters. So to take a field extension, capital K, Galois, and the, the Galois group has no characters. Then, if you use this sequence, you find the following result. in that case you find that the H1 KT at is zero. So there's no obstruction in that case. Well, exercise. Yeah. Okay, so but uh, let's come back to the to the proof here. So we had RMV, so we continue the proof. So we had the MVs, which are in U of K V, U of AK. And then we have theta, which is in H1 et al. ut. So we can evaluate, look at the family theta of mv for v in, o, in omega, and this belongs to what? Well, to the direct sum of the h1 of kvt. So it's in the product a period, but because the point was adelic, we have an argument that the theta leaves over some model, and so you get something really in the direct sum here. Okay. Okay, and now, the fact that your MV is orthogonal is in uh, U of AK uh, orthogonal B. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I went. I should, I, should I, I, I didn't go, no, I'm, not going, I'm going the wrong way around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me uh, go a step, I go one step back. Um, I must apply, I must apply the, uh, um, 
the formal lemma to uh, to the MV first. Yeah, so, sorry. So the formal lemma for the bra group uh, gives that there exists a family PV in U of AK, PV close to NV for VNS. And for all um, alpha in B this time, uh, the sum of the alpha of PV, V in omega, is zero. Okay, we apply the formal lemma to this finite subgroup B of the bra group. We had, an, we had a hypothesis about the intersection with B intersection bra of X, but we can modify the MV to a family PV, which now will be orthogonal to the whole of B. Okay. 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 Now, now the, this alpha. So, what is this alpha of the shape alpha runs through the elements of the shape theta, cup, chi. Okay. And chi varies in H1KT hat. So that we have sum of <coughs> theta, cup, chi, v uh, in omega of the PV equals zero for all um, for all chi for all chi in H1 KT hat. But this chi has nothing to do with the PVs. So that formula says that if I take the sum of the chi, if I take the family chi of PV, which leaves now sorry, look at the family chi of PV, which leaves in direct sum H1 KVT and I map to H1 KT hat, dual, I, sorry, uh, this, um, theta of PV, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, theta, thank you, thank you very much, a theta of PV in this direction, uh, and I'm, I map to this, I get zero. Okay, so the family of theta of PVs uh, is evaluated on H1 KT hat is zero. That's my conclusion. And now we throw in the theta, the Poitou tet Nikanama sequence, and we produce, so there exists, so no, so tet Nikanama, so Poitou tet Nikanama implies there exists an alpha in H1KT, so that alpha goes to theta of PV for all V, a global one. Now, this theta, remember, was a class in H1 UT, and this alpha is a class in H1 KT. And now you can, this is a group, so you can subtract these things. So it, what happens is that if you, you get, uh, so if you take theta minus alpha, twisted by minus alpha, you find that theta minus alpha of PV, so this one, this, theta, this one, theta minus alpha is a class in H1 UT, and this one is zero for all V. And that's the conclusion, because we've produced this new uh, torsor. Uh, we've produced this, so this T cell minus alpha corresponds to a torsor Y minus alpha over X, over U, sorry, um, which has the property that evaluated at each PV, it is zero. But think that it's, it's zero. At, if a torsor is trivial at a point, it means there's a point upstairs. If a torsor is, is trivial, it means a torsor is trivial if and if there's a section. So when you evaluate to the point, if it's trivial at this rational point, it means there's a rational point upstairs on top of that one. Okay? So that, that gives the proof. Okay. So this is a... I hope... So here's the conclusion. the conclusion. Then there is alpha. Okay, so I, I switched the alpha and the minus alpha, it doesn't matter. I could have called it the other one minus alpha with this property. So uh, the only thing when I switch check is that the point really is, is adelic. 
it's, it's not it's just in product of but it works I mean in the product of the y alpha of kV it's, it's okay okay so that's a, that's a proof okay now I come to what Harpers and Wittenberg have been doing so really this this idea of this idea of using Poitoutet Nakayama rather than bar of k, direction bar of kv, bar of q mod z, which we use also, of course, but oh, I mean, to use also that one is really a, a very nice trick because this is the thing that enables us to get rid of this abelianity condition. See, the torus t, it's any torus. So a torus is basically some commutative object, but when you look at R1 capital K of K, GM capital K of K, the Galois group need not be uh, abelian. Okay. So you get lots of things which are non-abelian by using this, this thing. Okay. Somehow, it's, you know, it's, once you've said it, it's, it's quite clear that this, is, this was a good right idea to have, but we missed it um, for a long time. Okay, so now, so I, uh, so I told you, so now let's see, about H, H star, H and H star. So there's a Schinzel hypothesis H, and there's H star. Now, again, these two hypotheses, they tend to give you something when the, for abelian extensions. So there's a problem with, uh, with abelian extensions. At, at the end, you use Hass's trick that uh, if a conic has points in all completion but one, then it has a solution in the last one. And we want to avoid this. Okay. So what Harpers and Wittenberg have, have, what Harpers and Wittenberg have done is that they've produced a substitute for Schinzel hypothesis. Of course, I mean, this is stronger. In fact, it is strong. I mean, in the cases when, uh, okay. It, it basically covers it is okay I'm going to write down this conjecture it's a bit long so there's a conjecture is star it's double star yeah I'm able to raise this again okay. so we start it's a bit long I'm sorry so k is a number field we have uh, an integer n which is at least one we have polynomials P i of t, which are uh, monic, P i is different from P j, yeah, sorry, so we start with these are all data, okay, P i different from P j, uh, P i is irreducible, we define the field K i to be K of t divided by P i of t, and we define AI in KI as a class of T in that field. Okay, the generator given by T. Okay, for each I, we're given field extension uh, LI over KI. Find it, field extension. And for this i, we're also given an element bi in ki star. Okay. And then s is a finite set of red places. So I won't write it down, but it's obvious. So we want all the polynomials pi to be integral away from s. We want the reduction to be separable. We want the extension li of a ki to be unrefined away from s. We want the bi to be unit away from s. And it's basically it. Okay, so it's always, always the same set of right places for this situation. Okay, and now uh, consider the system of equations. Given that it is t minus ai equals bi times norm li over k, ki, of psi i, where t is a variable in k, and psi i is a, I mean, <laughs> can you stand this notation, xi, capital xi? You know the story about, uh, about Serge Lang? Sorry. You know the story about Serge Lang and Psy. <laughs> you know it, huh? <yeah? laughs> 
Okay, so anyway, this xi i uh, is a variable in li. Okay, so li viewed as a as a as a as an extension of k. That is, the number of actual variables in k is the degree of li of a k. But we can take the norm down to little ki. This bi is in little ki. This ai is in ki, and this t is in k. Okay. I could write the, down the, the variables that would be very heavy, but it's clear what it means. So look at this system. This from i running from 1 to n. So it's a variety of a k. Okay. And now we assume. So I, I look at this. Why not? Huh? And I assume that. Um, that, so is it all the assumptions? Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Suppose that there exists a solution um, uh, over each kv for v in s. We're going to assume solutions for v in s for kv in v in s. So solutions given by tv comma xi i v. So i i range from one to n. Okay, and then, so this is the conjecture. This is uh, H, H star star. There exists a T0 in K, which is very close to TV for VNS. So this is the first condition. And the second condition is that for all I uh, in for Ri, for all W place of uh, Ki with W of T0 minus Ai strictly positive, then either W is over S, so it's a bad place. Or, and this is very important, there exists a place uh, of degree 1 uh, of L, uh, Li over Ki. Okay, so. so we have this system of equations. We're assuming that we have local solutions for VNS. We don't ask about the other places. And then we want a T0 in K, very close to the TV, such that uh, we don't care, such that if we find a, um, an I where W of T0 minus I is strictly positive, and W is a place of Ki, then in fact either W is a bad place or the extension Li over Ki, which we had here corresponding, has a place of degree 1. So the Li, so that means Li tensor Ki, K, um, sorry, Li tensor, I'm sorry, what do I want to say? I have Li over Ki, yeah, okay. Li tensor Ki, Ki W is equal to Kiw times something. Okay, so the, the extension in a big Galois, where we want the w at least as one factor of degree one in the extension Li over Ki. That's a bit hard to swallow, but it's a, they, they made the minimum conjecture so that people in Nitic numbers here would be able to prove it. Okay, that's, that's a, so, please, please. yeah, I will repeat, yeah. Uh, uh, so the condition the is the two, the two here, yeah. yeah. Or there exists a place of degree one of Li over Ki over, over, over our W. So we look at the place W with W of T0 minus Ei strictly positive. We don't care about the other ones. We suppose there's a Y and we have a W, minus, uh, this thing is positive. Then we want something about the extension Li over Ki. We want it. We want the W to have a place of degree one uh, on this extension. Okay. 
That is, if, what we want is that in a place like this, we want this to have a trivial uh, solution for trivial reason. Because locally, you'll have one linear factor. So it will be easy to find a solution. Degree. I mean, it's, you have all the eyes. So, I mean, it's, no, no, I, I, what I can answer is that it's a, it's a variable. So, at least what I can say is that the number of variables is variables. So, dimension will be uh, one plus the sum of the degrees of the li of a k minus n. See the, as I say, each time here we have degree li over k. Uh, equation uh, variables. So we have the sum of these variables here, then there's a t here, and then we have these n equations. I mean, in concrete, you know, this is to get the most, I mean, you, you, we want the most your result. In concrete cases, these are very concrete equations. We've seen equations like this before. So I, 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 let me show you a very simple case. I mean, a simple case. You look at uh, all the ki is equal to k for all, is equal to the ground field for each i. Uh, each extension li is ki of say root ai, a root sorry ci, and then we look at the system t minus ai equals bi times uh, ui square minus a ci vi square. Okay, this is in k, this is in k, and the variables are. The, the T and the UI and the VI. So we saw such equations coming out when we're studying, remember we're studying Y square uh, plus minus AZ square equals product of the T minus EI. It, 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 and with all the same, the, the I equal to this. Hmm? Is it actually obvious that dimension? Is it, is it obvious? The dimension? Yeah. Well, you have to check that there is no, that they are no. independent. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it looks pretty obvious, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, the EI, AI, I mean, um, it doesn't depend on... No, I mean, the AI, AI might be different from AJ, I mean, in some way. <laughs> this is a, uh, no, because, let's see, it's a fiber product after all. You see, each, each of them over A1, you have this, you have this fi variety which is fibered with this dimension in the fiber, and you're taking the fiber product over A1. So, I mean, to compute the dimension is, uh, yeah, I think it's okay, it's okay, it's, it's a fiber product. Mm -hmm. And all the maps are dominant. So, uh, So I mean, we had seen the case where where the equations like this, and they led to equations where with the same a. And we do do this various uh, when you use the formal lemma, we did use from this. We are led to such equations. Okay, so they're making an assumption of such equations. The difference is that in this case, we wanted to prove the uh, as a principle for such systems using Shinsel. And here they they did. Yeah, first of all, the extensions need not be abelian. That's a big difference. And then we, we, the assumption is minimal because, uh, because it's a conjecture. <laughs> then we want to make the minimal... Uh, uh, okay, anyways, that's, well, you'll see what, what happens. Uh, I'll, I'll say more about this. So there are statements which are close to this one. So in the paper of Harpers and Wittenberg, you'll find a statement like this. So uh, other, other statement. So this hypothesis is called H star. Okay, this is H star. H star star. So consider, no, consider to get something closer to has a principle. Consider a uh, system, so again, same, same K N, uh, K I over K as before, uh, L I over K, A I in K, and K I and bi in ki star. Okay, now consider the variety w given by the following system of equations, u minus e, uh, eiv, oh, I'm sorry, e I, e I, eiv equals bi, so it looks very much like this, the one over there, norm li over ki of psi i. But then you take, a, so this is w, so you take this variety, i range from 1 to n, 
and you delete a certain closed set. You delete uv equals 0, 0. So this is, and you delete, so you take a, this is a, we're going to create a quasi-affine variety. This one is affine, but then you delete this thing. And then you delete, now you delete the following thing. You delete the xi i, which live in R L i over k uh, g a minus R L i over k g m singular. So uh, the xi lives in, as I said, the xi. Remember, the xi lived in this group, in this, uh, in this, this thing here. The xi was a variable in L i, so it corresponded to something here. Now, what is this singular locus? Let's look at a simple case. Simple case is um, um, suppose, uh, suppose it's degree 2. So we're looking at x1, x2. And then we have, um, um, so x1, x2 is the plane. And then we have the, um, the gm cross gm here. So if I, if I take away gm cross gm, what is left is this thing. If I take, I take a2, suppose capital, suppose li over k is of degree 2. Suppose li over k is of degree 2. So this is, this is a twisted form of the plane. In fact, it's the plane, a right, fine plane, ga. Question? No? So I'm taking ga over li, and I descend it to k. It's, it's very formal because it's really, it's just isomorphic to, to uh, in fact, to ga to the power of degree li over k. But here I have this r li over k gm, which is not formal because it, typically it would be, I would be taking something like u square minus av square equals zero. So if I take away this, if I take away this, this gm cross gm, what's left is two, two, two lines like this. And the singular locus will be this thing here. Okay? And it, in a higher dimension, it will be the analog. If I take something with degree three, I'm going to take away uh, the three axes of coordinates. Okay, so you take this away, this singular locus, and I mean this is because yeah, we want something a very precise statement. Okay, now this variety, this W, so this is this minus this, this is W. This W now is fibered over P1 because you can send it to UV. See, we've taken away UV equals zero zero, so there's a morphism to P1K. And this vibration is smooth. And now I'm going to write down the statement which implies the hypothesis over there. So, so the proposition, again in Sarpas Wittenberg, uh, if the union for T0 in P1K of the fibers of WT0 of AK is dense in W of AK, then H star star and this for all, all possible values of S and so on, holds. Okay, so this is a variety fibered over this, this P1 here. And then we take something which is an adelic point. So this is subtle because W is not a projective variety. So it's really an adelic point. Okay, and then we have the adelic topology here which is uh, more complex, I mean, W is not projective, the topology is more complicated. Okay? But so anyway, so we have a topology here, and so we, we, we start, start something here, and we want to show that there exists, in fact, lots, if I start with a point here, I can find a T0, and a fiber which contains an adelic point close to the start one we started with. So it's exactly like the, state, the kind of statements we're after. The point is that here we're not making any, we didn't put bra orthogonal to the bra group. And there's one good reason is that in that case, in fact, the bra group is trivial. 
And somehow this object here, which they have written down, is a kind of universal object for the, proper, for the problem we, we have. So if I have a morphism from x to p1, which is split, but not geometrically split, and we choose in each bad fiber uh, some, some, um, next, some component of matrix C1, we look at the, the, the integral closure of the ground field in this, uh, in this component, we'll get some Li over k, and we're going to get some auxiliary variety, which will be a model for the original vibration we started with. So this is a kind of universal model for the problems we have. Okay. So anyway, so this, this is proposition. And there's a simpler proposition, which is that uh, proposition is that if for all V0 finite strong approximation away from V0 holes, then H is true. Holds for, 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 for W. So again, this variety W is not a projective variety. Okay. And we're asking strong approximation. Now, perhaps I should remember, remind you what strong approximation is. You're, you're in strong approximation. So let's see, I can delete. So if I have a variety x over field k, strong approximation, and I replace v0, means that uh, x of k, well, first of all, it means that, uh, yeah, I should say something, I should, uh, means that there's always a problem here. Um, x of k is dense in the projection x of ak in the in the image x of ak v0 so we look at at the the adls away from v0 so, so i have x of k here which of course sits in the adls of x then i forget one place and I want x of k to be dense here. The, the image, in fact, this is just the problem is that we might have no point at kv0. So let's assume we have points in all the completion. Okay. Then let's consider a variety which have points in all the completions. Then strong approximation away from v0 means exactly this. x of k is dense here. That is, you can approximate at all places except one where the thing goes to infinity, just like in the Chinese remainder theorem. So you can define that for any variety. Okay. And so what, what they have noticed is that if strong approximation holds for this variety W, which is kind of nice because you've killed lots of uh, invariants on this W, then we would have this conjecture. So uh, cases where H star star is known. Well, there's one case is, um, so you, you look at uh, sum, let's look at sum of ki over k, iron from 1 to n. It's like this delta, it's a bit like this delta we had before, okay? a measure of how many bad fibers we have. Okay? So if this thing is, let's call it epsilon, if epsilon is at most uh, 2, then h star star is known. So what does it mean? It means that no, if it's at most two, there are not many possibilities. <laughs> okay. So typically, example, you have just uh, i equals one, two, and then each ki is equal to k. Okay. But it's, it, if you look at the, if you, I, I won't do it now, but I, I advise you to look at the original conjecture even when the case when there's just one. It's not obvious even for one. Okay. But the point is that here it's okay, and so what, this is proved using strong approximation for what? For affine space E and K 
minus a closed set F of co-dimension at least 2. So you see, weak approximation is a property which is very nice. It's Barachon invariant. If you have an open set, if you have a big variety, you have an open set in it. If the big one satisfies a weak approximation, the open set strong approximation is completely wrong, of course. If you take G A, it satisfies strong approximation, but G M doesn't. Okay. So it's a quite natural question to ask what happens. How stable is it when you take away something? And so the, it's a remark which was made actually quite recently. Uh, I think the first time I saw it was by these people, um, uh, 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 Xu and Dash and Y. They, they notice it's not even once you've said it, it's easy to check that in a fine space, if you take away some of coordination too, you have strong approximation. But whether this property holds in general, I do not know. For instance, if I take a semi-simple, simply, if you take a semi-simple, simply connected group. G, we know strong approximation, that's a famous theorem. If you take away some sort of convention 2 in it, I do not know whether strong approximation holds for this complement. Okay. So actually, there is no uh, example, there is no an example. Well, it's not true? Uh, you mean a counterexample for this? No, 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 uh, no counterexample. <coughs> so, if you replace uh, find space by something uh, different? Yeah, I, 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 do no example. I don't think so. I, I, I have to think a bit about this because I remember that they have some interesting, these people have like Xu and Fei, the, the way, the same way. In fact, they will both be at the, the conference in June, by the way. Oh. Uh, they, they, uh, they have some interesting examples. That now I forget what the example was, so I, I would have to be a bit careful. But still, I think, I think this is really a quite open question. It's quite an interesting question. Anyway, so, uh, so the case I, I, one, equals two, 1 and 2 are proved using this. Uh, of course, it is small. Now, but there is a big theorem there, which is that the big theorem is that conjecture A star star is true in the following case. So it's a theorem due to. Um, um, Lillian Mathison, and which uses a work of Green, Tao, Ziegler, and previous work between Browning and Mathison. So she proves that for k equals q. Each ki is equal to q, n is arbitrary. The li of a q are arbitrary. H star star holds. So it was really a case where these people from the arithmetic geometry side decided to write down a question and then say that, well, <laughs> get all the people in ethic number theory and she managed to prove it. Okay. So this is an analog. Of course, this is an analog of the result we've seen with uh, Green Tau and, uh, of Green Tau, okay? Green Tau giving special case of Shinsol. Well, special case in of Shinso. Okay, I told you, the Green Tau theorem for a system of linear forms in two variables is a Shinso type of statement, and so what she has managed to prove is uh, she has proven this, this conjecture here in the case over Q again, the chi being Q, and then but the extensions here are arbitrary, so they need not be abelian they, in in, a, in extension. Okay, so now let me. Uh, so what I so my plan. My plan is or was, to try to um, explain what. What. Um, so uh, let me state this here. A theorem of Harper's and Wittenberg to start with.
So the paper has two main theorems, one on zero cycles, which is unconditional, and one on rational points, which is conditional. This is the one which we want to see, which I want to explain. At least I want to give some idea. So here's the theorem. So what... Uh, The simplest statement is this. So we suppose um, f x to p1k is a vibration. Um, the x is a, is a good variety. Uh, assume that the joint fiber x eta over kft is rationally connected. Assume uh, assume hypothesis H star star. So K is a number field here. And take take M V in X of A K bar for the total space and say S is a finite set of places, S finite. Then there exists uh, a point T0, point say P0 in P1 of K. X P0 smooth. And a family PV, PV in X P0 of a k bar x p zero with p v close to m v for for v n s. Okay, so the statement is now there, there is no abelianity condition. We start with a point which is orthogonal to the bar group on the total space. And we find a fiber, which is an adelic point, also go to the bar group of the fiber. Okay. And moreover, which is close to the given point we started with. So you can see the improvement on the theorem we had in the IBM case. Uh, there's no assumption that the fiber is satisfied as a principle. We just need that the fiber, to get some concrete result after that, we need that the uh, that this subtraction is the only one. Okay, so perhaps I should say, write down some immediate consequences, to, so that you get a feeling for this statement. Uh, corollary. Assume H double star uh, for any equation. Norm capital K of K of Xi equals P of T. So different from zero sitting in X, smooth projective. We have X of AK top equals X of AK bar. Okay, so these are very concrete equations. Uh, which this was known, I mean, of course, there is this, kind of this hypothesis still here, okay? But the question is, uh, I mean, we had discussed very special cases where P of T was very of a small degree, where the extensions were abelian. There is no condition here. Capital K of K is in a field. P of T is in a polynomial. And the point is that the fibers here are birational to principal homogeneous spaces under tori. And for these, it is known that uh, the set of rational points is dense in the Brahmanian set. So you get the result. Uh, and and the initial, so of course the problem is this is conditional, but here is another color, eh? to, to, to tell you what happens. If you take K 
k is equal to q, and you take uh, an equation norm, capital Q of a Q of psi is equal to product of t minus ei to the power ni, i am from 1 to capital to 100, <laughs> and ei is in Q. This is corollary to this. Exactly, yeah, this is corollary to, uh, to the, so what, uh, corollary of Matheson, using Matheson, I mean, using this theorem, and uh, the Matheson result, so the, result, so the corollary of theorem plus Matheson, which proves H star in, this, in these cases, for such equations where a period k of a q is arbitrary, and, but here you have all the factors, all the, the polymer has all its root in the ground field. Okay. Then we know the result. So in particular, if there is one smooth threshold point, then the rational points are risky dense for such equations, which again was absolutely not known. 